Hey YouTube, uh, here again with my SW20 MR2. Just after installing a rebuilt alternator, I noticed that my battery was still going dead, and it's due to a possible break in the wire to this fuse panel from the alternator. So apparently it's a common problem, but you'll see here, the battery light is not turning on when I turn the key forward. And even when I started up, the tachometer was not working. I believe that's due to low voltage. So here I have the connector, the main three-wire connector removed from my rebuilt alternator. And I've already soldered in a wire to the black and yellow wire. I soldered it in. You gotta make sure you solder these wires in because um, if you don't, twisting it and just wrapping a tape, it will come apart. It's really important to know when you're working on cars and race cars, the vibrations will cause wires to come apart if you don't solder it. Make sure you unplug the battery, of course, before you do so. So I am uh, taking this test wire from that alternator it's already plugged back into the alternator, and I'm just going to see, I'm going to put in the black and yellow connection here to see if it fixes my problem. To see if there was a break in the wire from the alternator to that panel. And here we can see the battery light is now on, which is great news. So now I have uh, drilled into the bottom of the uh, panel here, and I, I ran the wire down, uh, zip tied all the way down the loom so it's nice and neat, not hanging and dangling. over to the battery here we'll see we're only about 11 and 11 and a half uh, volts which is way too low uh, and the car's not running it should be still at least 12 volts and now if we uh, turn the key forward we'll see the battery light comes on turns off the tachometer is working properly now and we should have over 13 volts now on the battery and we're good so i hope this helped So another quick to the point video here with my SW20 MR2 Turbo had a bit of a popping snapping noise from the rear end upon acceleration and braking and over bumps. I thought it was the uh, sway bar end links. By hand you couldn't really move them. As soon as you put a wrench on it by turning it uh, effortlessly you can see it, it was moving up and down. So on the uh, opposite end here I've ordered put a new um, sway bar end link in. And also, I tightened up the uh, tie rod where it meets the knuckle. There's a little boot back there. I pulled the boot back and I uh, put some uh, appropriate grease back there and then I really tightened it up. But here was the main culprit of my snapping popping noise was this trailing link. Now, I put a crowbar there and I was able to duplicate the noise. You may not always be able to duplicate it, duplicate it but uh, I, made it, I heard the noise once. So. What happened was the nut was seized to the bolt. So even though you think it's tight, it's not really tight. You'll see here, it's just, it just kind of turns together with the bolt. So the first thing I had to do was unseize the bolt from the, or sorry, unseize the nut from the bolt. I need the uh, bolt approach here. It's just a typical blowtorch you can get from your hardware store. And I uh, got the nut removed. Best thing to do is to change the nut and bolt. Fortunately, they were out of stock, and uh, I just uh, put anti-seize on it, and uh, we put everything back together, torqued it up, tightened it up, and uh, noise was gone. I hope that it helped uh, anyone out. Please like and subscribe, and I promise these videos are going to get better as time goes on. So, thanks for watching.